Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. I absolutely love papers that look at the long arc of computing and I found this one over on Hacker News the other day and so I thought I would read it and cover it for this channel. This paper looks at, as the title tells us, how fast algorithms in general improve over time. And it tries to come up with a systematic and rigorous answer to that question. And that methodology and rigor is really what sets this paper apart. The authors are trying to go really broad, as they say over here. They looked at 57 textbooks and more than 1,100 research papers to trace the arc over time of entire families of algorithms and how they have been improved over time. One of the motivating questions for this paper was to figure out how the gains from algorithmic improvements compare with gains from hardware getting faster over time. And as we will see from their findings, algorithmic improvements are just as important, if not more important, than simply waiting for hardware to get faster. Before we dive into the results, let's quickly look at their methodology. They break algorithms into families, where a family is broadly defined as trying to solve the same underlying problem. So the example they give here is that of merge sort and bubble sort belonging to the family of comparison sorting algorithms. The way they pick families is by surveying a large number of textbooks in the field and that gave them 113 algorithmic families. What qualifies as an improvement? As one would expect, an improvement is a reduction in the worst case asymptotic time complexity of the algorithm or the big O notation of that algorithm. Okay, so let's look at what the authors found. This first graph, the one in red over here, simply shows the number of new algorithm families discovered in each of these decades. So this is simply scholars defining and describing a new problem along with an initial algorithm for solving it. This graph in blue right below it shows the number of improvements to algorithmic families in that decade. And as you can see, the 1970s somehow stands out. The authors do call this out because the 70s seem to be an outlier both in terms of the number of new algorithm families discovered as well as the families that were improved. They have a couple of hypotheses to explain that. One is that some of these algorithms were already optimal, so they couldn't be improved anymore. Another one is that scholars found the low-lying fruit and then further improvements became more and more difficult. These next two graphs are a bit more interesting in my opinion. This first one shows the time complexity of algorithms when they were first discovered. So for example, we see a lot of exponential time complexity algorithms. We see a lot of n squared ones. And then this next diagram, which looks like a state transition diagram down here, shows the various complexity classes and the probability that in any given year, an algorithm would move from one complexity class to the next. So the ones I've highlighted here, the ones that take us out of exponential complexity into some sort of polynomial complexity are really important because they take an algorithm from the realm of impossibility to merely the realm of difficulty. And these may seem like small percentages at first, but if you compound these over a few decades, you'll see that the march of progress has been quite steady. By the way, they also include this one constant time complexity node in this graph with no algorithms getting improved to the point that they become solved in constant time. I thought that was a neat inside joke. So now let's look at the core question of how algorithmic improvements compare with hardware improvements or Moore's law. 
And this graph paints an interesting picture in trying to answer that question. On the x-axis here, we just have time. And on the y-axis, we have relative performance for these various algorithms that we're plotting lines for. And what we're plotting on the y-axis is for a problem of size 1 million, so n equals 1 million, how many such problems could an improved algorithm solve in the same time that the very first algorithm took to solve a problem of input size 1 million. So if you look at this red graph over here for the maximum subarray problem, when it was proposed, it only had a brute force algorithm to solve it. And then it got better and better with improvements from brute force exponential time to n cubed to order n. So those are some pretty significant improvements. If we look at polynomial factorization, it went from n cubed to n squared. Notice that the y-axis is exponential, it's not linear. And then we compare these relative speedups due to better algorithms to hardware improvements. And the proxy we use for that are the results of the spec int benchmark. So it's the same benchmark run on the same inputs and we see the improvement in those benchmark scores. Now, there are a couple of observations one can take away from this graph. One is that the improvements due to hardware tend to be quite predictable plotted on this exponential y-axis, they're almost linear, which is what Moore's law would predict. On the other hand, the improvements to algorithms tend to be very unpredictable, very sporadic, but also tend to be much larger step changes. And while that previous graph looked at just a few algorithm families, this graph shows the extension of that analysis to all the families under consideration. And what we're plotting here is average percentage improvement per year on the x-axis and the percentage of algorithm families that saw that improvement on the y-axis. And then we have this cutoff over here, which tells us whether it's slower than hardware improvements over time or faster than hardware improvements. So slower or faster than Moore's law. And we see almost a bimodal distribution in that there are a lot of algorithms on the left over here that are kind of static. They're not seeing too many improvements. So obviously they're improving slower than hardware. Whereas on the right here, we see a class of algorithms, especially this heavy tail on the right side which shows a lot of improvement and the improvement happens much faster than hardware. So overall, this broad expansive survey of algorithms over time shows us that there is not one uniform picture. A lot of algorithm families do not get improved after their first initial solution, but then a good fraction, about 14%, see improvements that are much, much larger than simply hardware improvements. So that was a quick look at a paper that takes a very broad and long-term look at how algorithms have improved over time and how that compares with improvements simply due to Moore's law. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.